Hi, I'm Bill Vass. Welcome to reInvent 2020. Our team runs about 42 different services at AWS, uh, and they range from things like quantum computing and robotics and autonomous systems, but also management and governance and streaming and things like that. So uh, I'm pretty passionate about this space. Uh, I've been working in information technology since 1980, and I've been a CIO uh, at the Pentagon and for Sun Microsystems and others. So running things at scale is really important to me, uh, but also management and governance as well. Compliance is a big deal. And customers always ask me, how do you guys run something at the scale of AWS? And this is how we do it. So I'm going to jump into it now and give you some idea of how we run and how you can run at scale and do your management and governance systems, uh, meet all your compliance requirements, handle security uh, and reliability on AWS. So it's really easy to get started in the cloud. Anyone can do it pretty quickly. You can create an account, allocate some compute and connect it to storage. My favorite, of course, is to do things in Lambda because you don't have to worry about auto scaling or instances or anything like that. There's containers are very popular these days, but running virtual machines on instances is probably the most common thing we see customers still do today. And it's pretty easy to get an application up and running. And I think that's something that's exciting about AWS. You know, click a button, you're running and you can scale it really quickly. If you build a great app, then lots of people want to use it. And so how are you going to scale it really big? And so we provide a lot of tools to start to allow you to scale that out. Like you can build all of your infrastructure in cloud formation and define it and allocate it and set up stacks in multiple regions and multiple places. But once it's running, you've got to make sure it's up and running, right? So you've got CloudWatch and CloudWatch alarms, and you've got logs to see what's going on there. And you can set up synthetics, which are like canaries that are constantly testing your application. Uh, which I love because it can make sure that it's up all the time for me. And then, you know, when you start to really scale and you got to debug it, you've got X-Ray, which will show you how everything's communicating back and forth between your applications. And then when you have lots of, of uh, instances out there, you can have system manager to manage all of them, patch them and keep them up to date and all those kinds of things. And that's great. But as your application gets bigger and you start looking at large organizations, uh, things can get a bit more complicated, so you need a lot more automation. So for big organizations like governments and, and any company that does public uh, uh, you know, uh, financial statements and things like that in any public company or any, any organization that has to meet standards and uh, compliance and things like that, and it's really common, you need to spend a lot of time on this. So for example, at the Pentagon, we had about 6,800 apps that I had to track, uh, about a $35.5 billion budget at the time. Uh, across those. At Sun Microsystems, we had around 5,000 apps. So it's really common to have these, this level of applications out there. And I had a ton of people to do that. And I didn't have the automation that's available in AWS today. Uh, you know, we at AWS, we meet more compliance regimes than any other cloud provider. We even can operate at TSSCI level six plus, which is what we did at the Pentagon. These are life critical systems that you run on AWS. So resiliency, reliability, security, those are really key. Uh, and I'm really excited to share with you a little bit about how we run this at scale and how you can take advantage of it. So we have a lot of products for you to do that. Uh, and we're integrating them more and more together, more seamlessly, uh, and letting you get started and get things going as quickly as possible and scale your organization and your accounts. But let me give you some idea of the scale that we run because it's pretty fascinating to me. I love large scale things. I've always worked in the large scale world. You know, Today on CloudWatch, we do one quadrillion metrics per month. That means you know, if you put this in, in a time point of view, 386 million metrics a second. So while I'm doing this presentation, every second, 386 million transactions and metrics are going by, being evaluated for alarms and things like that. We have over 10 million instances being managed in System Manager. Uh, think of that, both Windows and Linux out there. We do over 2 billion configuration checks every month to make sure that uh, what our customers are running meets compliance. Uh, and we have, we, you know, CloudTrail is an amazing thing. I wish I'd had that when I was at the Pentagon or at Sun Microsystems, where I can see every single API that gets called. We do over 500 billion audit events every day. So while we're watching this five, you know, today 500 billion audit events will occur. That's pretty massive scale. Uh, and it, it's pretty exciting to build systems that do that. But you can't do that without a lot of automation. 
And we, we also offer great integration with partners when you need specific things in specific areas or deeper analytics or, or, or uh, uh, more familiar interfaces and things that you like, things you might be used to on-prem. We've got fantastic integration with our partners. Uh, and these are just some of our partners that we have out there. So let's talk about use cases and, and how you get started in all this as, as you bring in the enterprise on data. Yeah. So we've got this, this great product called uh, Control Tower. Control Tower lets you set up automated governance and uh, security and set everything up ahead of time. So sort of set the guardrails on how all your accounts are going to be allocated and run. We have organizations which lets you set up you know, uh, you might have thousands of accounts in a big organization unless you set up, say, here's the finance organization or the HR organization or the, you know, the, the marketing organizations. And then all of the IT professionals that are working for you that create accounts in those areas, uh, uh, you can have rules that apply to those that are specific to each of those organizations. We've got Security Hub, which lets you know if you have any security issues ongoing and can manage that. Uh, and we've got guard duty, which gives you constant threat detection and is constantly protecting you. So, so setting all that up just gives you this foundation to enable all this automation to get ready to scale. And that's really what this is about, making it quick, easy, and fast to scale on AWS. The next thing is you've got to enable compliance. And that is a lot of work, as you all know. Uh, any big organization has got to handle these big compliance regimes. You know, there are over 206 different audit points in a lot of the common compliance regimes out there, and you've got to get it up and running and make, make sure you can do that. Uh, CloudTrail is a great way to do that. It keeps track of everything that happens, and you can audit it. You can run machine learning. We've got anomaly detection on CloudTrail, for example, that can show you anomalies that are there. Uh, config allows you to set up and configure your resources uh, in a way that uh, you can see if there's any changes there or anything gets out of compliance. And then uh, we have this new product called Audit Manager that lets you simplify the auditing out there. Now, one of the things we launched last year was conformance packs. Uh, and we just launched the infrastructure for you to build your own conformance pack. Uh, and this year, what we've done is we've, we've created all 50 compliance regimes that are available in conformance packs. And what you can do is you can take a conformance pack, say for PCI, you can cut and paste it, you know, download it, change it, and create your own conformance pack for PCI for your specific uh, industry or your specific organizations. And for me, as a former CIO, conformance packs are just magical. Um, let me tell you what I'm talking about here. So what you can do, like, let's say you're a company that is a multinational company that's got a lot of different systems you run, and you have, say, an organization uh, where you're running the IT environment for, say, a finance group, so they're selling things to healthcare companies and to governments, right? Uh, so you got a lot of compliance, and of course, it's a global organization. So what you do is you say, here is my finance healthcare team of accounts, Anything that creates, gets created under that account, I want these things to apply. So I just go through and I click on PCI and I click on HIPAA and I, I click on you know, uh, uh, AWS best practices and I click on GDPR. I just select the things I want and then magically, every time anything is created, any resource in the account, all of that is automatically applied to it. I can't make a mistake. I can't miss my compliance. Uh, and then when the auditor comes for a PCI audit, you click a button, generate an audit report, and hand it to them. I used to have like 40 people at Sun Microsystems that just did this full time and hundreds of people at the Pentagon. And now it's just automatic. I really love conformance packs. I, I know you can, you can tell I'm excited about it, but it, it just, as a former CIO, it makes life so easy out there. All of our tools really enable that. So now let me turn it over to Roshan Vallat who's with the Commonwealth Bank of Australia, and he's head of their cloud products. Thank you, Bill. Hi, I'm Rishan Villat, and I lead the cloud product team here at the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. In this session, I'll run through how AWS has allowed us to transform the way we do governance and compliance of cloud, resulting in better outcomes for our application teams and the needs of our regulators. But first, who are we? ComBank is Australia's largest bank, and the main financial institution for one in three Australians. We're the number one in online and mobile banking with over 7 million active customers. One of our primary goals is to extend our digital leadership in the financial services industry 
And the ability to rapidly bring new products and experiences to our customers is paramount to staying successful. Public cloud plays a big part in realising that goal. We've had a long history in public cloud with many workloads running and our CEO recently announcing we're accelerating our cloud journey. Which means it's even more important to look at new ways to govern and secure cloud at scale and continue to exceed the expectations of our customers, shareholders and regulators. The most significant shift in our cloud journey though came from the business and their application teams wanting the empowerment to use cloud services in a true self-service manner. This gave us two problems to solve. How do we accelerate our journey to cloud safely? And also, how do we create a new self-service consumption model that still kept usage compliant with our policies and standards? It became apparent this was not just a technology problem, but one requiring us to transform our processes and uplift the culture of accountability within our application teams. So how do we keep the business safe but facilitate innovation and agility? As an analogy, on our roads today, keeping people from excessive speeding but still allowing them the freedom to drive is a very real problem. And there are a number of solutions, from placing speed limits and signs, putting speed humps everywhere, or even having driving instructors in every car. But we can also use less intrusive methods, such as random speed checks, and placing mobile and fixed speed cameras to continually monitor our roads. What we realised is that our existing governance processes were akin to the first three options. Heavy design processes, a myriad of approval boards, and hand-holding all usage by specialist engineers. It was largely a mix of preventative controls. And the thing about preventative controls is that they limit freedom by nature. These were hugely restrictive for the business and their application teams. Sure, we had periodic control assurance checks, but this was too infrequent and not in-depth enough to be an effective governance mechanism for self-service consumption. What we needed to do was to improve observability and shorten the time to address deviations through real-time detective and corrective controls. This shift maintained our ability to govern, but importantly allowed us to increase freedom. Just as improvements in technology made speed cameras a valuable addition to the governance toolkit, we could do the same for our cloud estate with a trust but verify approach. With this new approach in mind, we engineered a new platform where application teams could access cloud directly. Sure, there were some restrictive controls in place such as identity, network and data security, but largely it would be direct active access to cloud services to construct their applications. Then, using the introspection and automation capability of cloud, we created a detective control mechanism called Curator. This inspected in real time what teams were doing and whether their usage was within the guardrails set by the policies and standards specified by our risk, security and operations teams. We chose native services such as AWS Lambda and AWS Config Rules to build Curator because of its seamless integration with AWS platform and the ability to leverage an ever-expanding set of pre-built rules. Curator provided real-time visibility via reports and dashboards, not only to the risk and security teams, but to the application teams as well, thus prompting action on whether their usage was within our risk appetite, driving the right behaviours to ensure it was compliant. And the important point here was that these were now data-driven interactions, no longer were application teams able to hide behind the excuse of just trust us, we're the experts. With self-service comes increased accountability and this was an important culture shift for our application teams to go through. Curator proved two important things for us. The first was having real-time visibility gave us much more insights about our cloud usage and control posture than ever before. We had transformed a previous manual process for control assurance testing into a real-time automated workflow. The data gave us a significant additional level of confidence that controls were in place and clear remediation actions for where they weren't. No more hiding behind design documents, implementation plans or waiting for periodic inspections. This was hugely beneficial in giving us the increase in governance maturity required to scale cloud adoption. The second part was, did we manage to change the culture of accountability within our application teams? This was an important test to validate that self-service consumption would be viable at scale without sacrificing safety. 
during the early pilot phase, we received this email. It showed we could now get our application teams to want to improve their cloud usage and maintain face in the eyes of our risk and security teams in return for that self-service freedom. We found that we could positively influence risk culture and accountability, and this was the key to achieving self-service, consumption at scale, and safety. By making non-compliance visible in real time, we shortened the feedback cycle for application teams, allowing them to make more frequent course corrections. Interestingly, this also drove an important culture shift of gamified healthy competition between teams, spurring them to have the fewest deviances. This quote sums up nicely our newfound approach to managing the compliance of our cloud environments at scale. Use data as a mirror to drive more objective interactions. Make teams accountable by connecting them with the visibility of how well they use cloud services. And use technology to explore the art of the possible, transforming existing governance processes and shifting culture, and reaping the benefits of better business outcomes provided by these improvements. So where to next? We're constantly looking for new ways to transform our governance mechanisms using the latest capabilities of cloud, balancing compliance and enablement, and minimizing friction wherever possible. We're reducing the effort and shortening the time for our application teams to remediate non-compliant controls using AWS Systems Manager for things like server patching. And we're exploring new features that allow us to scale governance to support accelerating our adoption of cloud. Features like AWS Config Conformance Packs, which will allow us to easily and securely manage compliance policies across our cloud landscape. I hope this has given you some insights on how we've approached cloud governance and compliance at ComBank, and something that may help you on your own cloud journey. Thanks for watching. Back to you, Bill. Thanks, Roshan. That was amazing. It's wonderful to see what you've been doing. So what we're going to do now is jump into some more use cases. So now that we've set up our governance and we've enabled compliance, uh, now it's time to make it run and scale. So now we move into our provisioning system. So you can create cloud formation templates for all your applications. Uh, and one of the things we've launched that I'm pretty excited about is the cloud formation modules, which allows you to have components within your cloud formations and build applications in your resources. Uh, so you can generate stack sets everywhere automatically. And one of the cool things I didn't mention earlier is CloudFormation System Manager, Config, and CloudWatch all run on-prem as well, and virtually anywhere. So you can manage things everywhere with a single interface on AWS. That's something I'm also pretty excited about. Once you get your applications and other things defined, your resources defined, you're going to have running, what you want to do is be able to create a service catalog so that people can self-provision and you have your controls in place. So we have, of course, service catalog up to enable that. And of course, you don't write all your apps yourself. You're using all sorts of ISV products and things like that that you'll have in those, those templates and different tiers and things like that of your application. So we offer Marketplace, which has got over 8,000 third-party applications, lets you find the things you want to run, provision them, and automatically allocate them and meter them on AWS, which is pretty neat. And of course, containers are really popular these days, as I mentioned Lambda before, uh, but also containers are getting to be more and more popular. So uh, new, we're just launched uh, AWS Proton, which lets you basically deploy and manage your container environment on AWS. Uh, and that's also one of those things that uh, uh, just really makes it easy to continue to extend your environment on AWS. So once you have it all provisioned, now you got to make sure it's running. You know, the old saying, you, you, you manage what you measure, right? If you don't measure it, you're not managing it. And that's where CloudWatch becomes so important. Uh, and, you know, the CloudWatch agent is open source, so you can run it anywhere, just like the system manager agent. And it allows you to really set the alarms, put synthetics in place. And we've just launched a whole bunch of new visualizations for it. Uh, so you've got all this great, rich visualization systems uh, inside AWS that you can run. And then X-Ray lets you debug distributed applications. So you can see uh, the transactions moving between each application, the, the volumes of them. You can sort, sort of say, hey, what's slowing me down? What's speeding me up? What can I do? How can I tune things? And really dig into how your application runs distributed across the cloud with X-Ray. And we just launched uh, earlier this year uh, CloudWatch Container Insights, 
Uh, and we're following it up now with uh, Lambda Insights. You remember how much I told you that Lambda is how I would write applications these days uh, because it's just so easy. It just scales automatically and you don't have to worry about operating systems and storage and all that other messy stuff. It's just taken care of for you. But you need to see all the logs and how it's running and how it's connected with step functions and other things like that. So we have Lambda Insights for you now. And that's another thing that just really uh, uh, makes it a rich environment for you to work on at AWS. So, you know, open source tools are a big deal, uh, and I'm a big advocate for open source, if any of you know my history. Uh, but I want to turn it over to Mark now, who's going to give you a lot more detail about some of our new launches. As Bill mentioned, open source has fueled a wave of innovation that touched every aspect of our day-to-day -day life. Open source provides a place for passionate, like-minded individuals to come together, invent and simplify, create common abstractions and implementation that benefit the industry as a whole. At AWS, open source is part of day-to-day -day innovation. Hundreds of engineers do ongoing contribution to leading projects such as Apache Kafka, Coreto, and Kubernetes. Today, I'm delighted to share with you three ways in which AWS is partnering with the open source community to invent and simplify on behalf of our customers in the area of observability. Customers use multiple monitoring solutions. Each comes with their own set of specific SDKs and agents, increasing engineering costs and operational overhead for adoption. Customers told us that they would like to see a single instrumentation standard and implementation where they can instrument their application once and use it with the monitoring solution of choice. Available today is the AWS Distro for Open Telemetry, a production-ready, AWS-supported, performant and secure distribution based on the Cloud Native Computing Foundation Open Telemetry project. With the AWS Distro for Open Telemetry, you can take advantage of a variety of language-specific SDKs that can be compiled directly into your application, together with auto-instrumentation agents that generate traces without the need for application modification, and a common collection agent that brings metrics and traces together with AWS service-specific metadata, such as an instance ID or a Lambda function ID, and allows you to quickly and easily correlate information and sends it to your backend monitoring of choice, including popular services such as Amazon CloudWatch, AWS X-Ray, Amazon Elasticsearch, partner solutions such as Splunk, New Relic, Datadog, AppDynamics, and Sumo Logic, to name a few, together with popular open source solutions such as Prometheus. With the AWS Distro for Open Telemetry, you instrument your application once across Lambda, container services, EC2, and your on-premise data center, achieving consistent observability. No single area of open source have seen more innovation than containers, with popular projects such as Kubernetes, Envoy Proxy, and Prometheus. While it's easy to deploy a single Prometheus server, Customers find themselves spending up to weeks configuring Prometheus for high availability, as well as optimizing memory, CPU, and storage to achieve consistent query performance. They then need to deploy additional open source services, such as Cortex and Thanos, to achieve high availability and scalable storage. Customers told us that they would like to take advantage of Prometheus and its powerful capabilities without the need to manage servers and invest time in upgrades and manual integration with enterprise security requirements. Today, I'm excited to announce Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, a highly available, scalable, and secure solution for monitoring container-based applications at scale. Prometheus is a popular solution that is optimized for container-based applications. With Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, you can take advantage of the flexible data model, the powerful PromQL query language, while achieving consistent query performance, 
security and availability, all without the need to manage the underlying infrastructure. Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus automatically scales the ingestion, query, and storage of operational metrics as your needs grow, ensuring consistent query performance in a cost-effective fashion. It offers a standard API for importing existing Prometheus configuration, such as alerting and rules. It also automates the lifecycle provisioning, upgrade, patching, and security of Prometheus. It integrates seamlessly with identity and access management to offer fine-grained access control for users and groups. Tens of thousands of customers use Amazon Container Services, including Elastic Kubernetes Service, Elastic Container Service, and AWS Fargate to deploy modern applications in a secure, reliable, and scalable fashion. With a single command line, you can deploy the AWS distro for open telemetry or configure your existing Prometheus servers to quickly and easily send monitoring data into Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, extending container monitoring across AWS and your on-premise data center. We were inspired by the feedback from our early adoption customers. Today, I'm glad to have with me Tim Moer, a site reliability engineer from Yelp, to share his experiences with the service. Tim? Yelp connects people with great local businesses. With unmatched local business information, photos, and review content, Yelp provides a one-stop local platform for consumers to discover, connect, and transact with local businesses of all sizes by making it easy to request a quote, join a waitlist, and make a reservation, appointment, or purchase. I'm Tim Moa, and I'm on the production engineering team of SREs at Yelp. At Yelp, we have multiple systems for observability, using logs, distributed tracing, metrics collection, and dashboards, which helps our engineers to reason about our infrastructure and services, to debug problems and investigate performance issues. As part of this, we use Prometheus across numerous teams with hundreds of users collecting metrics from 15 different types of exporters running on EC2 instances and as containers. For technologies such as Cassandra, MySQL, Envoy, HAProxy, and Kubernetes. We use Grafana for our dashboards, which are linked from alerts. We're consuming 20 million time series across all our Prometheus instances in production. So we needed to shard our Prometheus instances across areas of ownership and run them in multiple AWS regions. It took us over a year to develop custom tooling and build a platform that could be used by our engineers and still requires ongoing maintenance. Prometheus speeds up our development time and effort with its ecosystem of metrics exporters, built-in support in open source software, its flexible service discovery mechanism, support for collecting high volumes of metrics, libraries for instrumenting code, and a flexible query language. We worked with AWS to test Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus and are pleased with how straightforward it is to integrate into our existing Prometheus setup. It will give us a fully managed service using familiar AWS tools for the long-term storage, automatic scaling of ingestion and querying of those metrics. We're able to consolidate our regional metrics into a single Prometheus workspace, which integrates into our Grafana setup, making the transition to Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus a seamless switch for our engineers, who can continue using the Prometheus service discovery and alerting rules they're familiar with. We're really excited for the future potential of Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. We hope to use it with all our existing Prometheus instances for long-term storage and dashboarding and across the organization as we transition more teams to a Prometheus-based metric setup. We're also looking forward to it supporting managed alerts in the future, as well as the ability to use the AWS distro for open telemetry collector to send metrics to Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus. Back to you, Mark. Thank you, Tim. Over the last few years, the beautiful dashboards and extensive set of data source plugin made Grafana one of the most loved open source projects in the industry. Developers and operators alike 
love Grafana for its ability to easily bring together logs, metrics, and traces into a single interactive experience, allowing teams to quickly and easily collaborate, dive into the information, and reduce mean time to resolution. Today, in partnership with Grafana Labs, we are excited to announce Amazon Managed Service for Grafana, a fully managed experience built upon the capabilities you know and love from the Grafana open source project, together with enterprise-ready security and governance, and tight integration with other AWS services. With Amazon Managed Service for Grafana, there are no servers to provision or maintain. You always have the latest capabilities and security patches. Developers, operators, and business decision makers can take advantage of Amazon Managed Services for Grafana to quickly dive into information, schedule reports, define and receive alerts in near real time. Amazon Managed Service for Grafana offers enterprise-ready security with single sign-on to your existing corporate directory, fine-grained access control, and consistent audit trail of user activity. Amazon Managed Service for Grafana integrates with leading AWS services. With just a few clicks, you can com easily connect to multiple AWS accounts and regions, bring information from Amazon CloudWatch, Amazon Elasticsearch, Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus, AWS X-Ray, as well as Amazon TimeStream, AWS IoT Sitewise, other cloud services, partner observability solution, and open source projects. With Amazon Managed Service for Grafana, there are no upfront costs, and you only pay per use. Before I hand back to Bill, I would like to share with you a quick demo of Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus and Amazon Managed Service for Grafana in action. Let's open up the Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus console and create a workspace for ourselves. A workspace is a virtual environment that isolates access control for ingestion, storage, and querying of our Prometheus metrics. Once created, we can use the generated remote write URL to have our Prometheus server send metrics to the service. Now let's see how we can use Amazon Managed Service for Grafana to easily visualize, graph, and query these Prometheus metrics. Let's create a workspace within the Amazon Managed Grafana Service Console by providing a name and clicking Next. Authentication will be handled through AWS Single Sign-On, which is enabled in the current region. Let's select the Service Managed permission type, which will set up the necessary permissions automatically. We'll select all the data sources supported by the service, and we'll also select Amazon Simple Notification Service for notifications. After reviewing the options selected, we can click Create Workspace. Now that the workspace has been created, we're going to assign users from AWS SSO so they can access the Grafana environment. Once users have been granted access permissions from the previous step, they can now access the Grafana workspace directly via this workspace URL without having to log into the AWS console. Let's click on the URL, enter our credentials in the AWS SSO login screen, and authenticate into Grafana. Here in this pre-created Grafana environment, we have a variety of dashboards and data sources configured. Let's add the Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus data source. We're going to give it a name, provide the workspace URL, and then save and test the endpoint after selecting the appropriate authentication option. We have a sample workload deployed in our environment using Amazon Elastic Kubernetes Service, Amazon Elastic Container Service, AWS Lambda, etc. Let's see the Kubernetes pod monitoring dashboard. Here, we can see the pod metrics collected by the managed Prometheus service from the environment. The application also sends custom metrics in Prometheus format, and we can see them on the pet adoptions dashboard here. We can easily create a new panel by querying a new metric like this. Now let's take a look at the traces generated by the application to see how it's performing. Here, we're looking at a dashboard showing trace data from AWS X-Ray. We can see some request types seem to be slower than others, and we can also investigate a specific trace if needed. Here, we see a segment timeline that shows all the various interactions the application is having with different services. There's also a deep link to the AWS X-Ray console, which we can use to perform investigations on the trace request. This takes us directly to the trace details page on AWS X-Ray, shows the trace map, and also the segment timeline. 
We can continue our investigation from here using X-ray analytics if needed. This application also makes use of some AWS Lambda functions. Metrics collected from the AWS Lambda environment can be queried directly from Amazon CloudWatch. In this dashboard, we can see the AWS Lambda function performance data as well. We can also connect Amazon TimeStream as a data source. In this dashboard, we have sample time series data collected from a deployment environment. Powerful visualizations here can help us dive deep into a specific timeline for more thorough analysis. We can also take a look at a simple dashboard that fetches data from an Elasticsearch cluster. As you can see, it only takes a few clicks in the AWS console to easily create fully managed workspaces for collecting, querying, and storing our container metrics in the managed Prometheus service, and instantly visualize the data in the managed Grafana service, along with multiple other data sources, all in one console. For additional information on how to use Amazon Managed Service for Prometheus and Amazon Managed Service for Grafana, please refer to our website and the AWS documentation. Thanks, Mark. It's wonderful to see what we're doing with the open source community and how we can leverage those products across AWS. Well, you know, modern apps require modern ops. Uh, and you want to build for modern architectures, as Mark mentioned. You know, serverless is a big deal. As I mentioned, Lambda is a big deal. Uh, so you want to be able to leverage those as you transition into the cloud, or if you're already in the cloud, you want to be able to connect third-party solutions so that you can operate them together as a seamless unit uh, to deliver services for your customers. You want to manage at massive scale, and you want to support open source innovations. And that's what we're doing with OpenTelemetry, Grafana, and Prometheus. Uh, and in fact, as I mentioned before, uh, the CloudWatch agent is open source, and so is the uh, system manager agent. So last, let's talk about System Manager, because now that you have it's the governance set up, you've got your compliance in place, and you can generate your audit reports, you've got provisioning and scaling in place, and you've got the ability to monitor and know what's going on, uh, you need to manage it. So we've continued to evolve System Manager, uh, and as I mentioned, you can use it on, on site, and you can use it at other locations in addition to AWS. Uh, we even have a product called Ops Hub that lets you run disconnected system manager for things like outposts and snowballs and things like that. So you should check that out if you have that requirement. But it allows you to do the full operation of your environment, all your instances and containers and things like that. Uh, we have the ability to do you know, tens of millions in, of, of instances and containers and things like that, and, uh, automate its deployment, automate patching, all of those kinds of things. Uh, and we've continued to add new features to it. So let me talk about some of the new features we're launching right now. So change manager is a big deal, you know, uh, doing countering and we talked about that earlier with the uh, system manager, but the ability to do change management, approve changes and operate changes through an enterprise is really important because, you know, your IT environment doesn't operate separately from the business. So being able to control the change, approve it, uh, that's a big deal across organizations and make sure that things are running in an organized fashion. Uh, so check out Change Manager. And of course, doing large scale management of fleets of Linux and Windows environments is what every administrator is looking to do these days. And so we wanted to automate that. So we released today a Fleet Manager. So Fleet Manager allows you to run your fleets of both Linux and Windows sort of in a common way across all of them. You don't have to RDP or SSH into them. You can access them without opening those ports up, which is a big deal. And you can perform all your common administration tasks running on AWS uh, and on-prem and others. There's a lot of different ways to define an application. You know, you can argue for hours, you know, different ways to define applications and what exactly is an application or a service. You know, most of them have some kind of presentation tier, a control plane and data plane that you're pulling together and, and managing there along with ISV products and other things like that. And you can define them many different ways. You've got tagging on AWS to define them. You've got the ability to put together uh, combinations of uh, uh, cloud formation templates and resources. Uh, there's way in our code deploy tools to define applications. There's a lot of different ways you can define an application today. So our customer said, you know, but we, we manage these thousands of applications in our enterprise. We need an easier way to define all the metadata around an application. So I'm going to talk to you today about App Registry and Application Manager. So let's start off with App Registry. So App Registry gives you the ability to really define your application with all of its metadata, its ISV partners, and all those different components. 
and all the AWS services involved. And that allows you to really sort of manage that application as one unit and you can instantiate it with multiple stack sets across AWS. And I think that's an important thing is this concept of an application that you can now manage and connect. And you can apply governance rules against that application as well. And you can use the app registry in your development process. And it gives you the context of an application. Like you could say, here's the order entry application. And it's comprised of uh, this set of web servers for the front end and this set of business rule servers. And maybe you have... I don't know, SAP and other things integrated with it. And this set of uh, database servers and S3 buckets and EFS file systems and things like that. But wouldn't you like to be able to manage that application as one unit? And that's what Application Manager does. It gives you the ability to get a dashboard for your application as you've defined it, to see all the resources together as you've defined it to review operational data and sort of see your CloudWatch metrics and other things like that and take action on your application. So you can't just, you don't just monitor it. You can take action. You can bring it up, take it down, make development. You know, when I was CIO, it always blew me away. We had for our ERP system, we had 39 different instances of our, our ERP system at, AW, at uh, Sun Microsystems. And, uh, you know, we'd have one for doing modeling and one for doing testing and one for doing, you know, the failover testing and one for doing you know, each of these kinds of things. That's not actually uncommon, along with, of course, the production systems and the QA systems and things like that. So being able to quickly define these instances for disaster recovery and other things like that and connect together gather the things. In the future, you'll be able to do things like back up an application or restore an application. Or one of my favorites is you can take and say, I want to deploy this application on a snowball and ship it to my customer. So we'll talk more about those kinds of things in the future. So uh, we have a huge portfolio here to enable you to manage your environment at scale in AWS and in other places as well. You can set up your governance, enable compliance, get your audit reports, provision and orchestrate, monitor it all, see what's going on and manage it. Uh, all of these are designed to work together. All of these go through security. All of these uh, work with IAM. All of these go through the rigor and scale that's required to run uh, on AWS. Uh, so so you, you can count on these. They're tried and true, and we continue to evolve them. Uh, based on your feedback. So if you see more things in these applications that you need and these services that you need, let us know. We're always listening to AWS. And just to remind you, uh, one of the core things of operating at scale is really automated centralized control and decentralized execution. So you can have centralized control over your audit and compliance and security and allow people to uh, do decentralized execution. Our goal here at AWS is to have a seamless environment uh, that allows you to manage end-to-end -end development, deployment, management, security, and governance at scale and automate all those components seamlessly, whether you're at the edge, and you can check out my edge presentation as well if you'd like more detail about how we manage at the edge and how this works with CloudFormation and how this works with System Manager and Ops Hub and CloudWatch and OpenTelemetry and uh, Grafana and Prometheus and containers and all those kinds of things. You know, the ability to manage at the edge and on-prem and virtually anywhere uh, with one consistent interface one consistent set of APIs, one consistent development environment, one consistent deployment environment, and one consistent security environment and security controls. That's really key. Um, so uh, take a look at that. Uh, uh, thank you guys for spending the time with us today. Uh, one of the things coming out of this you, you need to take a look at is this idea of managing at the application level in addition to the container level and the Lambda level and the instance level and all those other things. Observability is key. You know, you got to make sure you manage what you measure. You got to make sure it's up and running. You got to make sure that it's uh, available. You got to make sure it's scaling, all of those kinds of things. Uh, and this movement to modern apps that are container and Lambda based and things like that, that's a key shift that's happening in the industry. Uh, so if you don't know a lot about Lambda, I suggest you go out and spend some time there. Uh, you'll be pleasantly surprised. It will reduce your cost. It will increase the speed of your development. It'll simplify your scaling. 
and you can see it all with these management tools. So there's a lot of other sessions out there. Join the sessions on uh, management tool and governance. Take a look at the blog uh, so you can stay up to date with what's happening in this area uh, and talk to your account rep of how you can leverage these tools across all of the environments that you run today. Thank you very much and, and have a great uh, uh, reInvent 2020.